Griever here. This is a quick PSA about safety. Remember, when modifying an Earth Blaster or anything really, proper safety measures should always be taken, and kids always, always ask your parents before using any tools or power tools. So be safe, happy modding, Nerf on. series on my channel here which I will be trying to do in a bi-weekly fashion just because I'm starting in the winter so some of the things I'm hoping to do may not, usually don't translate well to winter um, activities but this is my new series called Back to Basics and what my goal for this series is is basically exactly what it sounds. I'm going back to the basics of modding. Um, I got into this hobby about five years ago or so when the end strike line was kind of at its just about to reach its apex before the Elite Blasters came out, before Flywheel Master Races, when you could still run a modified Alpha Trooper and be competitive in an NIC war. And a lot of the stuff coming out because you have all of those um Strifes, Demolishers, the Modulus, the Rapid Strike, everything is kind of focused on flywheels, and we're kind of getting away from what the hobby was originally built on, and that was modifying Springers, which actually is my favorite thing, really. So, this first episode, we're not actually going to be modifying anything. This is basically for the straight-out beginners of Nerf modding. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my workbench. We're going to go over some of the tools of the trade and what you'll need in your workshop to really kind of get going into uh, the modification hobby, I guess. So let's go over to that, and then we'll come back to me here. Okay, so we're just going to go over a couple of the basic tools that you're going to need for starting out in Nerf modding. Now... This mat is new to my workshop, but it is not required for Nerf modifications. I got this because I, um, I'm a big fan of Punished Props, and I've gotten the Foam Smith book, so that's going to be stuff for later on. If you want to go check him out, uh, he does really awesome, awesome stuff. Builder and you are a god amongst, like, foam things. All right, so first things first, and this is the key to any start in Nerf modding. And that is screwdrivers. Now, I'm not going to sit here and throw out like 50 different size screwdrivers you're going to need. These are the three that I basically use all the time. I have this one, which came from a small little um, set. Um, I think this was like the biggest of the Phillips heads in there. Um, this is really good for, um, I'd say like not getting out just about any Nerf screw that there is. Um... Because of the design of it, though, it is a little tricky to get a grip on it, but this is probably my go-to for unscrewing Nerf blasters. This, um, it's a standard side screwdriver. I actually got this when I was in college, so unfortunately I don't have an exact size of it, but, you know, you can see here it's smaller than my two hands combined, so it is Phillips head. This is my go-to for when this doesn't work. Because if a screw is being fickle or whatever, um, this has a much better grip that you can unscrew things with. Uh, the only downside to this one is because of the width of the actual screwdriver itself. It doesn't always fit in all the holes. Insert jokes here. Um, so, I mean, sometimes, you w sometimes this usually plays out best, but sometimes... You just need both of them, so it's good to have both of them around. Um, the reason I have a flathead here is because sometimes when a shell is stuck together, you need something to kind of like wiggle them apart, and a flathead screwdriver is perfect for that. Um, you do need something with at least a little bit of body to it, so something along the lines of, let's say, this would not be ideal. This would be a good, this is probably the, I would say, a pretty good go-to size for it. So, 
this is basically where all of us start with. So get yourself a good pair of um, screwdrivers. You're already two steps into the game. Now, another thing that is um, a good thing to have around is also a pair of pliers. Now, I have two sizes here. Either one can serve you pretty well because you only really use pliers to kind of break stuff off. Um, obviously, if it's a very big chunk, you go for bigger things. If it's small, you go for this. And you also could always use a good pair of little wire snips. Now, these two I actually got in a set from Home Depot along with a third. Um, I just didn't take it out because I normally don't really use it too much, but I do have it in my workshop. So... And these aren't that, this wasn't that expensive. I think for the three of these, it was a total of five dollars. So, um, and they are and they are good quality. So don't let the uh, price throw you thinking, oh, you're gonna have to get like you know twenty dollar wire snips for it to be good. No, as long as it works, it's okay for now. Uh, next thing is adhesives. Now I have two adhesives here, and these are two that I always use. We have first epoxy. Um, Clear epoxy. Now, this is JB Weld's Quick Set 5-Minute Epoxy. Now, does that doesn't mean that this is ready to, good to go. You can put this on something and then go play with it 10 minutes later. The 5 minutes is for to quick set. Um, that means it's, it takes about a minute or so once you put something on to kind of like adhere it to the point, to the points. Five minutes means you can pick it up and move it. It takes a full hour for this one to cure in normal weather conditions. So, I mean, it's good. It's quick setting. Like I said, in five minutes, you're able to kind of at least do what you need to, so to speak. But I would still wait wait a full hour. Or if you're doing it late in the day, just leave it overnight. By the next day, it's totally good to go. Um, we also have here some super glue. Uh, this is Loctite super glue. This is the gel control variety. Now, Loctite makes varying degrees of super glue, as with most manufacturers. The reason I like this gel control one is because over the years of using like um, different kinds of liquid super glues, I find that they are very messy. They can, if you're trying to get like just one or two dots, it's usually not enough glue. So if you use more, it just like winds up like bleeding all over the place. I like the gel because it's exactly that. It's a gel. You can concentrate it in one spot. So you can put like two or three dots, but you can also like maybe put another dot on top of it if you want that extra adhesion. So there is that as well. Now going on to some of the more, you're not going to need these right away, but it's good to have them. Um, first thing first is this. Yes, this is a knife. This is not a toy. Um, I did get it at a dollar store. This is like a pair of four, I think it's, I think they were pairing knives. Um, reason I got this is because it is a very sharp edge and it's good for if you do any shell work and you have some like ridges or something that didn't quite come off as clean as you want or you have some flashing from doing a cut. This is really good for getting that off. Um, just please, please be extremely careful with these. You will cut yourself if you do not respect your tools. Um, that's like a key thing in any workshop is you respect your tools and you and be safe with them and you'll be fine. You know, if you just play around with them, you're going to get hurt and it's not going to end well. Um, either by something getting cut off completely or... Maybe a couple of stitches, but who knows? So just always be careful with that. Uh, next is this. Sandpaper. Yes, sandpaper. This is going to come into play um, later on in the series once we get into painting, once the weather gets really, really nice. Um, this is just some standard 3M sandpaper. Um, this is 220 grit. Uh, this is basically what I use for majority of all the sanding that I do on my shells. Um, it's really good for um, smoothing out some of the rougher grit sands, or if you're just trying to get off like some lettering or whatever, with some elbow grease, this works just totally fine. Uh, another thing you could definitely use, and I would honestly recommend these actually get these with your screwdrivers because these will all help, is 
pens and markers. Um, reason for these is basically, you know, if you want to take notes on something of what you're doing, you need a pen for that. So you would also need paper, but I'm not getting out a sheet of paper because, you know, that's just a little silly. Um, the marker is good because if you're going to be doing any kind of uh, shell work or if you're going to be cutting anything, markers are good for marking off points of where you need to make the cuts. This is a Sharpie pen, so this works just the same as a regular Sharpie, just with a super, super fine tip. Uh, this is good for if you need to get into like kind of like a small area that you need to make a mark or a little mark. So either way, it's good and they're good to have in the workshop. Next thing is going to be this. This is my Dremel. I got this about four or five years ago when I first got into the hobby. Um, is it an absolute necessity? Not really. Is it a great tool to have, though? Absolutely. Um, my This Dremel, I think, cost me maybe about 50 or 6 like somewhere between 40 and $60. Honestly, I've, it's been so long, I honestly really don't remember. Um but this is really good for a variety of reasons because you can just change out the tips and here's some of the uh, bits that I do have here. You have grinding bits, which is great for doing some power sanding on a blaster. Just be very careful because you can go deep into the shell with these. Um, we will do, we'll do that once we get into um, the painting aspects of uh, the series. And you also have cutting wheels, which is great for making cuts into the shell if you're going to, let's say, do an extension on a, do something undermounted on a, uh, on a long shot. To cut off that piece where normally the bipod would go, this would be what you would use to cut it off. Now, you can also use this, which is a hacksaw. Um, this works... Basically, this is basically the hand version of the Dremel uh, for cutting, at least anyway. Um, hacksaws are good to have around. Um, one, they cut metal, uh, as long as you have the proper blade for it. But also, they do cut plastic very well. Um, these are pretty much if you just need to just hack something off, hence the name of it. But overall, I really don't use my hacksaw too, too much to make cuts. If I do anything, I do use my Dremel. But... These are still good to have in in any workshop, really, a saw. Um, so we will be adding this to the, you know, kind of the must-haves. Uh, just a few more things here. What, a claw hammer. These are really good, um, especially with the old-school old school way of modding. Um, taking out an air restrictor, basically what we would used to do is just take a hammer and a screwdriver and just hammer out the ARs in the systems. Um, AR removal really isn't that necessary anymore. Um, but if you ever did want to do it, it is good to. It is a. It's a good old school method. But also, a uh, claw hammer is good because if you're working with anything like a tri strike, a long strike, a long shot, a Vulcan, anything with one of those bolts that go through the bodies. Say you put it together and you realize later on, I want to mod it. Oh, how do I get that bolt off? Because without, because that bolt is going to keep you from being able to split the shell in half. Claw hammers are really good for actually separating those pieces. You just got to find the right side of it. Uh, a little bit of pressure on, fr you know, a little bit of pressure and it does eventually pop off. Just slow and steady. You're good to go. Um, these are some tapes that I use. Uh, electrical tape is always good for well, really anything. Um, if you can't fix it with duct tape, you go for electrical tape. Uh, the other thing is also, this is Teflon tape um, or plumber's tape. Now, the reason I have this in my shop is because back in the day, when we used to modify the old end strike blasters, and even the current ones, I still do it with any of my uh, springers that have a plunger on it. Um, what we would do is you take the O-ring off of the plunger head, and you would wrap like one or two strips of Teflon tape around it. One, to kind of keep the O-ring um, from moving around a whole lot, but also um, to give it a little bit more, um, uh, make it um, a little bit more um, protrude, protruding. 
so that the you get a better seal from your actual um, plunger head. But speaking of that, and I forgot to actually grab this, so I'm going to do it now. You also will need um, something along the lines of either silicone grease or white lithium grease. Now you can go either way. Um, this is white lithium grease I got from when I first started. It's actually so old it's actually gone yellow. I don't even know if I should really be using it anymore. But my go-to for a while has been sil uh, silicone grease. You can get this at most uh, plumbing and home hardware stores. This happens to be some silicone grease I've gotten from Orange Mod Works over the years. Orange Mod Works is a company that does modification kits and um, for um, uh, for Nerf Blasters. Wow, I just lost my train of thought there. I apologize. Um, you can get this directly from them along with springs, um, upgrade kits, and all that kind of stuff. Um, one episode later on, I actually do have a... Uh, a uh, orange mod works kit that I may wind up just taking out and showing you guys how what what basically a third party kit would look like for upgrading a nerf blaster and that is really everything right now so these are basically what you would need for to at least get kind of started or get your foot in the door and most of this stuff is really cheap this was like maybe two or three bucks at Home Depot uh, screwdrivers, especially if you get them from Home Depot, you get the HDX uh, variety. Those are not very expensive. That's where this hammer came from. That's where these came from. Um, this pair of pliers I actually got at the dollar store. The silicone grease goes for super cheap on the Arch Mod Work site. Plus, if you get a kit, it does come with it. Um, but I'm sure, same thing with the with the lithium grease. It probably goes for only like two, three bucks in any home in any home's hardware stores. Uh, this was probably maybe about 10, 12 bucks. This for a pack is like five or six. The knife was a dot for, was basically 25 cents. It came as a four pack at a dollar store. Uh, the super glue and the JB weld was probably about like, I think this was like four bucks. This may have been five. The most expensive thing you're actually looking at out of everything here is the Dremel. The Dremel is going to be your biggest investment into the hobby, outside of the Nerf Blasters themselves. Um, but honestly, it's a good tool to have. Even if, you, even if you're no longer doing the hobby, it's still a good tool to have because it's a rotary tool and it has so many different functions. So that's everything I could really think of for right now to kind of get, you, get the foot in the door. I'm going to go back to sitting over by my wall and I'll finish up this video there. Okay, so that's basically a lot of the starter tools uh, that I think somebody who is fresh into the hobby could definitely make benefit of. Um, are you going to need everything that I showed you? More likely than not, no. Um, will they be helpful down the road? Absolutely. And as I was explaining, as I was showing you them, most of the stuff that I have really is not that expensive. So... With the exception of the Dremel. That, again, I got that four or five years ago. Um, because I didn't have it when I first started. Um, I did get it a little after I started the hobby. But it was a 40 or $50 Dremel that I got. It wasn't like, you know, top tier echelon of, you know, the Dremels. But again, it wasn't also, it was also not the chintzy, you know, $20 piece of junk. So... You know, that's the one investment I knew would definitely be paying off over the years of not just use for nerf mounting, but I've used it for other stuff as well. Um, but really, that's really going to be it for this episode. Now, I know some of you are watching and going, dude, this is back to basics of modding. Why did we not mod anything? And this episode was really, again, just to kind of get everyone's feet wet of where I'm kind of going with this. We will be modding in the next episode, and what we are going to be working on is this, the Nerf Retaliator. Now, my very first Nerf Blaster, um, I guess you could say, you know, within, like, you know, my current hobby and all, with the current love of the hobby, was actually the Recon CS6, which was the predecessor to what this is. So we're going to be going over a full mod guide, and I will be explaining to you why I'm doing what I'm doing. So hopefully everyone will learn something in that episode. 
And I hope you did learn something in this episode. And if you enjoyed it, throw me a like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want me to do in this series, what you would like me to work on. Um, I have some stuff already planned out, but if you have something you want me to work on or want me to answer, throw me a comment down below. I do read all of my comments. I, I try to respond to every single one I get. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of Back to Basics, and I will also see you in my next review or mod guide on my channel, The Creeper 2112. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Later.